You are listening to ChartingWealth.com for Tuesday, the 14th of November, 2017. Ten minutes a day is all we ask, five days a week. Every day the market is opened. What do we see going on here at Charting Wealth? We see everything up for the day. We'll start first, as we always do, with SPY. Now, it's curious, after 11 weeks of strong up movement on the S&P 500, this week starts off with a fall off. We have a red open box candle. Now, could that change throughout the course of the week? It could if there's some strong upsurging, but we do see that the derivative oscillator is falling off since it peaked back on the week ending the 3rd of November. It's dropping and the the price percent oscillator also is slipping sideways and down a little bit. As we tune in a little deeper, we see, of course, that the two-day chart has crossed over going down. So that puts us in the mode that we are not in an uptrade in any way on the S&P 500 now because of the two-day crossover going down. Remember, we have to have the weekly chart and we have to have the two-day chart moving in the same direction in order to have a trade at all. So we have now confirmed a crossover going down on the two-day chart, meaning significant weakness. And of course, as we look at the four-hour chart, we saw it originally cross over back on Thursday the 9th going down. And of course, now we've had a penetration through the two-day chart. Haven't had a penetration yet on the four-hour as far as the weekly goes, but things are significantly weak. We did have some up movement in the afternoon on the first day of the week, the 13th, and we'll continue to watch and see what we see, but we do not have a trade in the S&P 500 as of now. If you happen to be in an up trade, that is over for now. Now we will keep moving through. We look at the Qs. Of course, the Qs has been moving up also since it started. Green candles moving up all the way back on the 6th of October. Not as long as the S&P 500, but we're counting three, six. This is the seventh week. And again, it's a green up candle so far this week. Derivative oscillator continuing to gain energy. Price percent oscillator not going up quite as strong as it had been before, but all price movement is above the two-day and the weekly trend lines, although the starting point for the week not as high as in the prior week. So again, We'll just continue to keep an eye on things. Maybe the whole market across the board is weakening. We can see as far as the two-day chart goes, what we're seeing here is a sideways slide starting back on the 7th where things pretty much maxed out, maxed out on the 7th of November. We'll continue to keep an eye on things. Derivative oscillator on the two-day chart continuing to gain energy. Price percent oscillator not going up as strongly as it had been, but still headed up. And as we look at the four-hour chart, what do we see? Well, we see it crossed over going down back on the morning of the 9th, that is Thursday the 9th, and really has not moved above where it started dropping on the morning of the 9th. So again, moving up a little bit in the afternoon after a spinning top in the morning, still negative though. So again, don't have a trade in the queues at this point if we do have a crossover going up. Now, you could have stayed in it if you were already in. We haven't had a penetration of the two-day or the weekly yet. But if you're not in, wait and see if we do have a crossover going up on the four-hour and you might have another jumping in point although things are getting a little long in the tooth, but we'll wait and see. Remember, we had this weekly vertical crossover on the week ending the 27th of October. It had been very, very good to us, but things did seem to peak out all the way back on Wednesday the 8th and then that drop on Thursday the 9th. So keep that in mind. You don't want to get in a day late and a dollar short. What do we see going on on the 20-year bond fund? Remember, we had the weekly vertical crossover back on the 29th of September. Things are down for a week, sideways for a couple of weeks, down for another week. Things have been moving up since the 3rd, Friday the 3rd, of the week ending Friday the 3rd of November. And we had two up weeks, but now the week has started off with a bit of a retracement as far as our hike and Ashi candlesticks goes. And we still have down movement. In fact, the derivative oscillator still negative, but losing some of that downward momentum. And the price percent oscillator still negative. Prices are above the weekly, 
but below the two day. Now, as we tune into this two day, remember that we had that two day vertical crossover back on Friday, the 3rd of November. Things have now moved back over, don't have a crossover going down yet. If that does occur, things start moving in the same direction as the weekly chart might have a jumping in point soon. So just keep an eye on things. Don't have a trade at this point, but we're always looking for one because we are trend followers. Lastly, we have the we we have gold. What's going on on gold on the weekly chart sliding sideways again. Things sort of trying to bottom out in gold around 120 50 121 something like that. And what do we have going? Well, as far as the weekly goes, price is pushing, oh, trying its darndest to push above the weekly trend line. Has not yet, but getting awfully darn close. Still in a confirmed weekly move, down move on gold. And we see derivative oscillator losing some of that downward momentum so far in this just first day of this latest five-day candle, the weekly candle. What do we see going on on the two-day chart? A red spinning top. That means movement is Again, lots of indecision tending down with that red spinning top after the prior two-day candle was a strong up move, but not enough to cross over going up. So we're still in a confirmed down move on the two-day chart also. But of course, what's going on on that four-hour chart? Looks like it's trying its best to cross over going down. And again, is it going to go much below the 2050 mark? We'll just have to see. And again, watch how things look in the morning and see if there is a jumping in point. If you didn't jump in sometime this afternoon, which I doubt you would have since that four hour chart just closed. So keep an eye on gold in the morning and see if you have a potential down move in gold. And remember, the weekly and the two day are still in confirmed down moves. So if you can jump in, check out the market around 1030, see how gold looks at that point on the four hour chart or at noon when that latest candle draws. If there's an up morning in gold, it'll probably pull the blue price percent oscillator back over the red so there won't be a crossing. But if the movement remains strong down, you might have a good jumping in point after the four hour chart closes at noon. That's where we are folks as we end the day on Monday the 13th and move into Tuesday the 14th, where we'll be providing to you. Look in this day's email for the latest chapter in our book, Charting Wealth. Of course, it will be coming out to our subscribers first. If you're not a subscriber, you need to be. You go to chartingwealth.com, put in your name, email address, and you get all the benefits that we have to offer priceless for free. You get the layout that we use at freestockcharts.com. You get our How to Read a Stock Chart video. You get links to our daily market worksheet, our weekly market worksheet, our trade worksheet, all of which you need to fill out, particularly when you do a trade, that trade worksheet, and every day the daily market worksheet. And for our Monday comprehensive review and forecast, once a week you fill out that weekly market worksheet. It is your trading diary. It is what you need to help yourself progress and to see where you've come from and are going to. It is what you need to supercharge your training. Folks, that's where we are as we end the day on Monday the 13th, going to Friday the 14th. We'd love to hear from you. Feel free to write us at any time, cw at chartingwealth.com. We love you guys. Let us hear from you. All the best from the whole team here at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.